Hello guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a rig for an umbrella. Let me just show you how it looks like, what you can do with it and then let's start with it. So basically you can bend your umbrella as a normal one, then you can fold it as well. You will just select your control point and bend it. You can adjust your bend right here. There you go. You can move it with your main controller. Uh, you can scale it as well. And this is basically what it does. This is an umbrella. So um, let me just transfer my objects to zero. And I will show you my construction. If you have never thought about how an umbrella works, well, this is it. There is this point right here, which will be moved always downwards or upwards. So you can basically control it with it. So let's just pick my main object and as you can see this is moving upwards and downwards. This is actually folding the whole umbrella so this is pretty much how an umbrella works. And this is what we will be building today. We can begin with this. Let me just start a new scene. And I will start with a simple sphere. Let me just drag it out for you. And change the number of segments to 8. I want to zero out my position of my sphere. So right down, just right click on those arrows right here. And this way my sphere is actually in the center of, of a scene. I want to change my radius to about 70 centimeters because this is going to be quite a big umbrella. Now convert it to editable poly. Delete my polygons down there and start modeling an actual shape of an umbrella. So I'll just move this downwards and in my top view I can scale it up. I will select my segments right here and connect them twice. I'll make a loop selection if you double click on a spline. Then it will make a loop selection of it. I will move it downwards and scale it up a little bit. I'll do the same with this one and scale it up. And the last one I'll just just select my vertex and move it down. As you can see this is already looking like an umbrella. Uh, last step with the model I'll just jump from my vertex to something small and I can delete my polygon in the middle. So this is looking pretty good already. And we can begin building our structure. You can go to your systems and start building bones. In order to do this correctly, I will go to my top view and turn my snap toggle on. Uh, make sure it's on uh, all three axes and that you are snapping to your vertex. So I can begin with this. This will be my first vertex. Click, 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 click. And I'll do it for all eight axes as you can see. Now, let me just change the color because it's really hard to see. Make it a little bit green. All right, now go back to my bones and start building it. This is a really fast process of modeling. This doesn't take a lot of time. Excuse me, control Z to undo. Now this hole in the middle is quite small, but it's not a problem at all. All right, so when we take a look in the perspective view, as you can see all those bones, uh, let me just change this to shaded and turn off my grid. Uh, all those bones have been built on my shape and right now I need to make these middle ribs that you are sliding up and down on an umbrella. So in order to do this I will need a helper point. I will create it somewhere in the middle of the screen and I want to zero out its position as we did already before and I'll move it just a little bit upwards. Something like this might work well. Now, 
If you would like to create a bone on another bone with the snap toggle on, it might create some issues. Let me just show it to you. I will pick this bone. And if I want to adjust it to my um, point helper, I'll click on confirm. As you can see, this didn't really do what I was expecting it to. So in order to do this, I will select one of my bones. I'll right click, select similar. This way I selected all my bones and I will hide it. Now I can create my bones as I did those before because those bones that have been built are not causing problems anymore. And keep in mind, if you are snapping into a helper, you cannot do it with the vertex, but you can actually select your pivot. So this is working pretty good. Now I will just start modeling those bones. I'll select one of my uh, vertices right here and select the pivot of my helper. Do the same for all of the eight axes. Yes, like this. Now, this is not really difficult. You just need to be aware of, of what you are doing. You can really easily make some mistakes. All right, so this has been done. I can unhide my um, bones and I will hide my mesh pretty much. So this is our construction. When we take a look at this and I'll select my parent of the whole hierarchy if I move this upwards, as you can see, those two bones are not attached together. And we need to change that because we need to affect all of these bones when we are working with our rig. Now this is our easy fix. Just select and link. And you can start linking all these parts together. You begin with the one below and attach it to your parent. So I think I've got it all. Now, as you can see, this one haven't been attached properly for some reason. So I'll just delete it. Hide my bones right here. I will unhide my mesh, which is the sphere. And I will redo this connection bones. Turn on my snap and reattach to my helper point. Now double check if everything's looking correctly. In this case it is. All right, so I can unhide everything. Hide my mesh again. And we can double check right now if there is something missing that we need to attach to. So in this case, if I move this upwards, as you can see, everything's connected together. I can check this in under graph editors and new schematic view. And as you can see, there are two bones that are not connected to my mesh already. So this is actually happening here. All I need to do is go again, select and link and link it together. This way, if I select all my bones here and try to move it upwards, everything should move with it. And it is actually doing so. This is great. Now, it would be a really good idea to rename everything right now because we will need it later on. So a really kind of quick way to do it, it takes about five minutes, but normally you would have to rename everything one by one and it would take ages. But there is this great tool in 3ds Max where you go to Tools, a Rename Objects, and you can work with this actually fairly good. Now, the way I want to rename this this is actually one branch and I will give it the name of a letter A. This will be B, C, D, A, F, G, H. So this will be my naming convention. And the way to do this is fairly simple. I'll just write my base name, which will be Umbrella Arm. Underscore A. Now my prefix will be bn, 
as a bone underscore and my suffix will be just an underscore because I want to number it. I will select my numbered and select my base number as a 1. Now this might look confusing at first but you will actually understand what this is doing. Well, let me go to my pick and in this window this is actually really handy because we can display all of our children if I go to display children and I will select expand all. Now we see the whole hierarchy that we are having. If I select all my bones right here, it will be one of those branches we already uh, joined together. Now you can as well go to an option where you can select children and this will automatically select all of these bones that are in the hierarchy. I'll just select the first one and this will apply for all of these bones in a scene. So let me just click rename. And if I press H, I can take a look at this, well, what happened actually. Let me just select this. And we can see this is our first uh, branch that we already renamed. If I take a look at this, now this bone is called BN underscore umbrella arm underscore A underscore zero one. This is the zero two, zero three, zero four, zero five. 06 and the last one is 07. Now I want to rename all of these branches to A, B, C, D, E, A as, as I already said before and this is a really fast way to do it. You can just change it to B, now pick it again, pick the second one or the second hierarchy, use, rename, now change it to C, pick, do it, do the same with it, rename, make it D, pick, and this way I'm renaming everything fairly fast and it doesn't take a lot of time, so E, F, now it's going to be G, rename, and the last one is H, and rename, confirm. Right now, if I take a look at this, and I will expand all. We can see everything is named correctly. And this is great because we can select those objects really fast. Now I want to change something because those bones right here are actually bone ends. These are kind of a joints. So we normally don't need them just under certain circumstances. And I want to know that those bones are called a little bit differently. Now, I can do it with the tools and again the same tool, rename objects. And this is a little bit different because we will need to adjust those values a little bit differently. Now, I don't want to change my base name because this would delete all of this that we have done already. And I would lose my A letter as well as B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Now, um, if you want to select uh, different objects or a couple of them, you can go to H and write, for example, let's see. Now, I could write down B, N, and if you write an um, asterisk, and for example, 0, 5, it will select all of these objects that are having uh, BN and 05 in it. So I can do it again. BN underscore 05. Select and as you can see all of these objects have been selected. Now if you want to do a couple of these selections that for example I will say BN05 and I want to do something different uh, in addition to it maybe BN06 uh, I can't really do that. So this is not working through this max, unfortunately. So I've developed a tool where you can do that. This is a little script that I wrote. And in this case, I can maybe say BN underscore zero five. I will make a space BN zero six. And if I click on select new, as you can see, those uh, bones have been selected as well as those down there. 
Now this is quite handy in a lot of cases, but in this case I don't really need it that much. I will just leave it open and we can work with it further. Now let me just rename those objects as I wanted to do before. Um, so let's take a look at this name. And I don't want to change my base name, but I want to change my prefix. I want to change my bn to be. Let me just write b e. And what remove first uh, digits means, it will actually delete those. If I set this to 2, it will delete those first two digits right here. So it will write instead of bn, be. And I want to have it right here. And I want to change as well my suffix onto 0, 04. And I want to delete my last two digits as well. The reason for it is I want to name the last object as a bone end of this bone right here, which is 0, 04. Now let me just select bn uh, asterisk 05. Select new. This way I have selected all of my uh, ends right here. And I can simply rename them with those things that we have changed. Let's click on rename and let's take a look what this did. Right now this bone is called BE, umbrella arm B and 04. This is actually what I wanted. Now the next one which I want to change is a 06. Let me make a new selection. Or first of all let's take a look at this bone. I want to have it, I want to change this number to 05 and write in front of it as well something like below or yeah just just to indicate that this bone is actually below my parent. Let's do it. Now I want to keep my uh, prefix as a bn so I don't want to remove any digits. And in my suffix, I want to change this to 05 because we already changed our uh, 05 bone to 04 and the next number is 5, obviously. But I want to write down um, maybe something like under and underscore. This way, when I select all of my uh, 06 bones, rename them. They're all named a little bit differently, so it is right now BN, umbrella arm, A, under, and 05. And the last bone that I want to change name for are actually those last ones, which are right now called 07. Select new, so make the selection right here. And I want to change the prefix as before, because this is the end of my last bone here. I want to keep my initial settings. So let's rename this. And if I take a look at this, this is right now BE as a B uh, bone end. Umbrella arm D under 05. All right, so this is finally behind us. I mean, this is really tedious job and normally a lot of people don't want to do that, but it's really helpful uh, later on and you will see why. All right, our next step will be creating a mechanism to actually fold our umbrella. Now I can delete my point helper, I don't need it anymore. And if we take a look at this, let me select those bones. And normally we would have to move them down in order to fold our umbrella. But if you take a look at this, this is not working at all. So we need a controller for that and the controller will be IK solver. Um, in order to do that, you can select your bone, go to animation, make an IK solver and HI or IK limp would work. So let's take a HI solver and we need to attach it to our last bone right here. If I try it out right now, this is our controller selected. As you can see, this is already making the bend that we actually need. Now let me undo this for you. As you can imagine, it is quite tedious to do it for each and every bone um, independently or manually. So I have created another tool in 3ds Max where you can actually build it really fast. So 
let's take a look at this script. Now, you need to input your start join and end joint. As a start joint, I can write down, for example, bn01, and this indicates that it will look through all those bones, which are called bn01. And when I write down something on an end joint, like a ba, asterisk 05, which will be one of these, it will check through all the objects if an IK solver can be created and if it does, it will be. You can change the name of your created IK solver. In this case, it will be with the prefix HIIK underscore and it will be named as your end joint bone, basically. And as you can see, you can delete first three digits which will be BE underscore, and instead of that, it will be called HIIK. Now let's try it. I'll just press on the create IK HI solver. And this created our controller. As you can see, this is made out of eight helpers. And right now, if I move this down, everything is working. So this is actually a really helpful tool. If you have a lot of objects that you need to connect with your IK solver, pretty much. Now, the next step, what I need to do is create a controller for our controls, basically. So let's make a circle, just a simple one. I want to enable it in viewport so that you can select it easily. Change the radius to one and a half and zero out the position in the x-axis. Alright, so I need another controller which will be the main one. Oh, let's make an N-gun with uh, eight sides. Make it right in the center in the top view and center it out as well. There you go. I can move it downwards so that it fits approximately where the handle would be. And I need another controller. Let's make an N-gun. This time three-sided. And let's make it around here. Now I want to rotate it at 90 degrees. Don't forget to uh, enable your angle snap tools. Change the radius a little bit. And this will be used for folding our umbrella. Zero it out. Alright, so I'll just move it upwards a little bit. Just to make sure that we have enough space to fold our umbrella right here. So this might work quite well. Maybe just move it a bit downwards. Something like this might work well. And Alright, so when we created this, we can rename them. Let's call this anim control main. Let's copy this. And name it bend. And this one fold. Oh, great. What we can do right now is actually before we start linking and wiring everything together. Now, let me just select everything and freeze its transforms. This is always a good idea to do it before you start linking anything together, because otherwise you would get really a jumpy result and there would be some um, mistakes in the model. So this is always a good idea to do it. Basically, when you Right now, when you move your object somewhere and you didn't really want to do that or you just want to change it to your initial position, you can ALT and right click and transform it to zero. And this way, when you freeze your transforms, it will always jump to your initial position. Now, I forgot to say how to freeze your transforms. Just ALT and right click and in the quad menu on the left 
top corner. You can just select it. Go right, uh, right now. What I can do is select my IK solvers, all of them, all eight of them, and I can link them to my controller. Let's try this out. If I pick my controller right now and try to move it upwards or downwards, as you can see, we are folding our umbrella. Now I can select all of my bones right here, which are the parents of my um, of my uh, hierarchy, and link them to my main control object. Then do the same with those both controls. And what this does basically, right now I can move with my umbrella and it doesn't screw up everything with the, with the rig and you can scale it as well, as you can see. Or rotate it and so on. So this is actually your pivot point right now of your umbrella. Now the last thing that's actually left to do is to link my uh, rotation axis of this object to all of these bones right here in order to... Mm, hold on a second, I'll just change it to local and by pivot of every object. And as you can see, this is what I want to do. I want to uh, uh, control with my rotation axis of this object every rotation of these objects right here. So basically, if I select all of them, let me select them, which will be BN02, BN03 and BN04. These are the object called like this, so you can check this. 02, 03 and 04. If I select it, all of them are selected right now. And if I change my rotation, you can see what we need to achieve actually. Now, the way to do this is quite tedious actually, because you need to do it manually and it takes a lot of time. So. Let's start with it. Uh, let's go to wire parameters and you can go to parameter wire dialog. So let's move it to the right right now. And on the left side, if I click on this icon, it will select my selected object and I can actually change its transforms. Let me go to rotation and let's check the rotation that we need to have. Let me go to gimbal rotation which is the true axis of the object. And we can, this is the Z axis of my object. So let's select my rotation and let's select Z1. Let me scale this for you. So we need to wire this axis to all of those objects. And those objects are having it as an Y axis, as you can see. All right, so let me select all these objects again with my script, select new, and we can do the same on the right side of this screen. All right, so right now, in order to wire them together, I can go to my rotation and select my Y rotation, make a one-way connection and connect it together. So let's check if this is working. And this was our first bone, which is wired together. Now we need to do this for each and every bone right here. This is quite tedious and it takes a lot of time. Now, fortunately, I have created a script which will help us with it. So let's try to use it. Now let's start my script. Now I will explain in another video, which I will post a link to on my blog and my description below this video where I will be explaining how to install those uh, scripts. I will basically make them available for you, so you can download them for free. I hope this will be helpful for you. Now, if you take a look at this script, we can pick an object that we want to control others with. Let's pick my circle right here. I want to control with my rotation Z axis. And this axis that will be affected is the y-axis of this object. 
Now let me write down all these bones. Again, BN02, BN03, and BN04. And we can try to wire those parameters. Our wiring was successful. So confirm, and as you can see, all of them were wired together now. Let's try it out. And as you can see, this is already working correctly. Now try to move this right here. And move my whole rig if this is still working correctly. So this looks good. Let me just unhide my mesh. And basically our rig is almost finished. Let's change the color of my controls. Like that. Mm, this is another color. Make it the same. Um, right now I can skin my mesh to my bones. So let's apply a skin modifier. And since we have created all these bones on this mesh within those vertices right here, we don't need to make any adjustments at all within the skin modifier. So let's select all of my bones, uh, expand all, but I don't want to display children. So let's select all of these bones right here, except for all this BE I don't need. So I don't want those BA uh, bones. I don't want to select my children right here. So I want to select it independently. Let's select BN, everything, and deselect all of this under 0, 05. Which are actually those bones here under. I don't need this mesh to be affected by them. So right now I can check it if this is working correctly. Let me just play around with it. So this is looking good. Now I can move this around and this is working as well. All right, so in order to make this mesh a little bit nicer because right now it's really low poly, we can apply a edit poly modifier. Let me just isolate the selection with Alt and Q. I'll select my edge. You can do a ring selection, then the loop selection out of the ring selection. And I will apply a chamfer on this, make it smaller and add another segment to it. A little bit bigger, something like this. Now confirm. And right now we can apply a turbo smooth modifier make it two iterations. And right now, as you can see, this mesh is looking pretty good. I can end my isolation and try this again. All right, so this is working good. Now, unfortunately, I have forgotten one thing. After we linked everything together, as you can see, um, let me select all of these objects, we have linked those together. So right now, if I try to transform everything to zero again, they should be staying on one place, but aren't. So I have forgotten to freeze those transforms after we link those together as well. So we need to do that now and we will lose our connection with, uh, with those bended bones actually, so we will need to rewire them. But it's not a big deal because we have our script, otherwise we would have to relink everything and it would take ages. So let me freeze these transforms and right now if I try to transform them to zero, then they are staying on one place. Alright, so this is correct. If I try to move this, this connection is still working. But we need to rewire our um, bones right here. So let me go to my script again. Let's pick our object and write down BN02, BN03 and BN04. Let's make the rotation Z and rotation Y as we did before. And let's wire it together. This was confirmed and when we try it again, this is 
working again. All right, so this was a quick fix. And what I want to do next is if I select my object and try to move with this, as you can see, if I go upwards, there is some crazy stuff happening. So we want to limit our controllers so that they can go further than this actually. Let's do this. So let's go to graph editors, then uh, turn on curve editor. And this is not too difficult to do actually. I'll just go to my position and my Z position and I'll apply a controller, assign controller and select float limit. Now you can look down here. This is right now at 82.3, but as we move it, it will show a relative value to your mouse cursor. And this is actually what we want to set up. So in this case, let me just set this to around 0 0.35. That was minus 35. And let's try this. So you can move it further than that. Now, as you can see, the movement at the end is really fast and it's not really convenient to move with it. So we can apply a smoothing on it, make it like six and try it again. Now, as you can see, you can adjust those values again. Let's make it a little bit more. Now this is way too much. Make it, push it back. Maybe make it 36 and a half. And I think this will work well. Let's try it with those values. And I think it looks good like this. All right, so we have a lower value. Now we need to adjust this one. I don't want to go further than that, actually, which is, let me uh, transform to zero as well as on my other object. And let's try to push it upwards. Right now I am at 13.6 so let's add that in 13 and try this okay i can't go any further than that this is good and i want to apply smoothing as well let's make it five and check it out now i can increase my value again to about 15 yeah this is working great there you go and let me just transform to zero again let me pick my other object and in this case I want to limit my Z rotation which is this one. As you can see we can go crazy with this and we don't want that. So let's take a look, let's apply assign mode controller, let's select your float limit and there are some crazy values right now so we need to change that. Let's check this lower value will be around I think this 95 so it was 0 95 confirm let's try this and you can go any further than that so this is good and uh, what about positive value um all right so I think 65 might be a good value so let's try this. You can go that and this is great. All right, so this is working correctly as well. Our well, next step what we can do is we can lock our axis that we don't need to use. In this case, if you go to your hierarchy panel and go to link info, you can lock your axis that you don't really need. In this case, I don't want to move with my controller right here at all. So let's select this. I don't want to scale it as well. And I want to rotate it only in my Z axis. So let's check X and Y. And this way you cannot select them. You can select only one axis that you're using it for. Now let's do the same for my uh, controller that's used for the fold of, of an umbrella. I actually just don't need to rotate it at all. I don't want to scale it. And I just want to move it in my Z axis. Now, for some reason, this option is working just with the local axis. So you need to check that which one is the correct one. In this case, it's a X. So 
And this way you cannot do anything wrong. You can't rotate it at all. You can scale it. You can just move it in your one axis. This way an animator won't make any mistakes actually. All right. So I think we are done with this tutorial. And this is pretty much how you can do an umbrella rig. I hope you find this useful and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.